Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. I'm Lynn Bartlow. I'm the lead pastor here. And I'm Kim Ogle. I'm one of the associate pastors here. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us rejoice, rejoice and be glad, glad in it. it. That's from Psalm 118. We say that when we gather for worship so that we remember whose we are and why we've come to worship. And we welcome you. We welcome you whether you are in this space or we also welcome our friends who are online. So welcome to all of you. We would like all of you to sign in so that we know that you are here with us this morning. If you used the iPads on the way in, then extra stars in your crown. If you did not, then we encourage you to reach right out in front of you and grab one of those green pieces of paper and fill it out. Let us know your attendance this morning and drop it in the offering plate when it comes by. Or you can point your smartphone to the screen and use this QR code to take you to our website our website that really is changing soon it's coming it's coming there are announcements in your bulletin you can find uh, the bulletin on the website as well but there are announcements here not going to read them to you but wanted to highlight two the first is we're one month away we're less than one month or three weeks away from um, our next um, blood drive so um, go to our go there and sign up for that. Um, you can give blood before you come to worship um, or you can give blood after worship. Either way, we'll be here sun that Sunday morning in the fellowship hall with the blood drive and it's a great way for you to give to our community without having to give of your wallet in any way. So hope you'll consider that. The second is, um, as you know, we are one church on two campuses. Um, at the same time, we're here at 10 o'clock. We are over on the sanctuary campus at 10 o'clock as well. And so uh, they are we're looking for Sunday school teachers in both locations. Um, we have a, a strong team here. We need some substitutes for here, but then we need some lead teachers over on the sanctuary campus. We do one room Sunday school style, so it's all ages in, in one group. You won't be by yourself, but if you would consider thinking about it, um, talking with our team, we would love to talk with you about that. That is all the ones I will highlight, but please notice all the ones that are also on uh, your bulletin. Uh, Pastor Lynn did mention the Sanctuary Campus. They are streaming now, so after you leave here and have some lunch, you can go watch different music. It, it's not as good as that, but... <laughs> Different. But it's different. Uh, speaking of different music, Wednesday night we have Soul Station. Yes, and um, we we meet for dinner and a program, and the program is following our Ephesians um, emphasis. Ephesians emphasis. <laughs> Say that five times. So fast. yeah. Wednesday at five thirty we have dinner, and at six fifteen, six ten we start our service. It is also on Zoom if you'd like to miss the dinner and just join us for the program online as well. Welcome to worship this morning as we continue our series in Ephesians, as we ponder how we are aliens brought near. Welcome. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we sing our opening song.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ as the chief cornerstone. Join us together in unity of spirit by their teaching that we may become a holy temple acceptable to you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us sing. is in the wreckage. There's no way the rookie can make it through. Not in one piece, that is. Grown-ups were laughing more than you guys were laughing. <laughs> it was hilarious. So Lightning McQueen had a pretty busy day, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Do you guys, you guys ever get really super busy and you feel like, oh, I'm really tired afterwards? I wonder if he got that way. I bet that's how he felt, though. Um, but he was also excited. So you can be tired and excited at the same time about something great, can't you? Come here. Manuel, Manuel. Come here. You can help me. All right. So we know that God helps us accomplish things, right? But do you know how he does it? Sometimes he sends friends, and um, like, like Lightning McQueen's friends, so sometimes God sends friends to help us, our parents or grandparents or whoever. God always has a hand in that. Do you ever feel like people are cheering for you? Like your little, yeah, those are cool. Well, they may not be jumping up and down like they were at the race, but, um, but saying out loud that you love the support, right? Do you know what support means? Anybody know what support means? Hmm? Well, I think support is when you have friends who listen to you and friends who help you do stuff and moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas and our siblings all helping you. And that's what all of these <clears throat> wonderful people do in Sunday school. They help you and, um, and they get very excited and make lots of plans for you. You know why? Anybody know why? Why would they do all that stuff? By the way, they don't get paid. So, <laughs> oh, Kathy. Good one. I got new pants. You got new pants? No way. Those are cool. So, do you know why they support you? 
Why? You don't know? Could it be? They love, they love you. Thank you. They do love you. And your pastors and all of these people, when you walk out, you look at all these people and give them away because they love you too. Because you are part of God's family. And God watches over us and he sends us other people to watch over us. So let's pray. Can you do this? God, we know that you are in charge and that you put all kinds of people in our lives to help us to grow and learn. We ask you, Lord, to help these children and all of us to cheer for them, just like their families and their church friends and their school teachers and their pastors do. We show each other your love by the way we treat each other. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that great intro. That made my day. I love it when they come in, don't you? <laughs> They're so cute. I kind of, um, I, in one of my sermons I said we collect kids, so we are now on uh, grandchild number five. And right after this service I get to go meet her, so let's wrap this up. <laughs> Not really, Lynn. <laughs> so our first um, reading comes from Mark chapter 6, verses 30 to 32. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest for a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure time, not even enough time to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Please join me in prayer. God, we thank you and praise you for bringing us a safe place to worship. We have many advantages and privileges, one of which is the honor of coming to worship so that we may better understand your will. Help us through the reading of scripture, through the music that we are blessed with, through the sermon and, the, and all of this in worship to feel close to you and to understand your message. We are grateful, Lord, for all who lead us in worship, in studies for people of all ages, for all the people who have helped us learn more about you and those nearly perfect saints who are yet to come. God, you are the creator of all good things and all good people. For that, we are grateful. We do live in a community of prayer. We lift up today Tom, Denise, Marilyn, Jack, and Sue, and trust, Lord, that you, uh, that you are caring for them. God, we come to you today as people who find confession and humility dif difficult. Help us to be humble and as grateful as a child who knows your love through those whom you have placed in our lives. Help us to be humble, for it is through our compassion and humility that people see Christ through us. This summer, many of us have been watching the Olympics. We've seen people with amazing and perhaps abnormal skills that could only have come from you, Lord. The biggest blessing to come out of these Olympics was not the longest journey of the torch ever, it was the coming together of athletes and fans from all over the world to compete as people with a shared goal, to use their skills to the best of their abilities. We know that those skills are skills with which you have blessed them, Lord. God, we have many requests every day. Today we pray that you hear our appeal that countries learn from the Olympics and from their athletes, that we can work together and respect each other no matter where we were born or what color our skin is or what skills you have given us. In all these things, God, hear our prayers as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus modeled the need for rest in our gospel story today. Elsewhere, he reminds us, we are more than what people call us, more valuable than the labels placed on us. With this knowledge and gratitude for all gifts coming from God, we are invited gently and humbly to share our abundance with this community and all those whose lives are impacted through it. Our ushers will come to receive the gifts of your tithes and offerings, as well as your attendance cards and your prayer cards. Let us give generously. Holy One, we pray that the gifts given to this church will go farther into your world than we can imagine. May our generosity rise to the surface in all we do. Bless us and all we share. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is the last week for our summer choir for this season. It's when you go, aww. <laughs> But we're delighted to be back um, So on September 1st for our first uh, set of services. And the last Wednesday of August, um, in just a few weeks, we have our first set of rehearsals. Um, and all are willing to, um, to join the St. Mark's Choirs. Um, we would love to have you as long as you love the Lord and love to sing. So we invite you to our, our choirs the last Wednesday of August. Thanks.
In our reading from the letter to the church in Ephesus, Paul affirms that God reconciles divided peoples in a politically subversive act. All are welcome to receive the gift of grace through Jesus Christ. Hear these words from Ephesians 2. So then, remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is, our, he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. Abolishing the law with its commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God. Built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'd like to share two two things before we get started with my sermon. One is, at at the first service, we prayed for and blessed um, Joan Freidenberg, who is uh, moving. She's been here since 2015 and has been part of both of our choirs, the summer choir and the bell choir, and lots of other things. So we appreciate you, and we send you off with our blessings. And two, we won the peanut butter party. Um, I, I'm sure there will be a trophy involved at a later date, but we received word uh, late this week that we indeed were the church that gave the most uh, jars of peanut butter, allowing ICS to surpass their goal this summer um, and have all of their clients um, be the ones that win overall. So thank you for your uh, work in that. As we start today, I also want to give a shameless plug for our reading plan. We are reading through the book of Ephesians this month. Now, if you haven't gotten started, it's okay. Some days there's two verses to read, so you can absolutely catch up with us. Uh, We have handy bookmarks in the back if you uh, didn't get one last week. On one side is the reading plan. On the other side is a suggestion of how you might approach each day's passages. If you're on Facebook some days, many days, we... uh, uh, post um, a picture with, with some of the verses for the day. And church member Alberta Farnsworth posts great musings on her own Facebook page on the day's passages. So lots of different ways that you can engage with the passages. Somebody pointed out this week um, at the Quilters group that it's a great substitute It's a substitute for the upper room devotional books that we are missing this month. Um, I have been told that the upper room laid off a large number of their staff and uh, it it messed up um, all their shipments of their upper rooms. And so thank you for your patience with us. We will let you know as soon as we get them. Um, But you can receive their daily devotion if you go on their website and read it on their website each day. You can pay a small fee to have it delivered to your inbox if you would like, or as I said, we'll let you know when we do get them back. Anyway, we're reading through the book of Ephesians this month, and 
It's not light reading, is it? Um, We skip a little bit from last week to pick up today's passage. Before we get there, would you pray with me? God, we are grateful for your word, which is alive and active. We give thanks for your word that you continue to move through. Oh God, move through us that we might hear your message for us from this passage in Ephesians. Move through us that we might hear your word. Speak through me that my words may be yours and show us how we might walk in peace. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. How many of you watch HGTV? All right, a few of you, a few of you. I I used to be obsessed with it. We don't have cable. I don't watch it anymore. I rarely get the clicker, much less decide what we're watching. Um, But I used to be obsessed with it. Design on a dime, trading spaces, divine design, whatever other ones I don't remember anymore. When my mom was receiving her chemo for um, breast cancer, the cancer center only played HGTV in the waiting room. They didn't want you to get your blood pressure up by watching the news or something else. So whether you liked it or not, you got to watch the Property Brothers or see if someone else was going to love it or list it. (laughs) To be honest, after a while, I just wanted to see the after. Show me the before shots, show me the after shots, forget all the drama in between. I love in my life that I have photos of my house before we moved in so that three years later and counting, I can see all that we've done to it over the years. Remember that built-in that was so weird and awful? Now we have a beautiful blue wall. Remember those windows that you couldn't even open and that leaked? Now we have energy-efficient, functional windows that keep out sound and water. Remember... Well, to be honest, it's no fun to remember a leaking roof, and there's no great pictures of it, so we won't talk about that. The befores and the afters were fun, right? As we turn to our passage from Ephesians today, Paul invites us to remember. Remember when? It's there in verse 11 as we begin reading. So then, remember. It's repeated again in verse 12. Remember. Paul says, remember what you were. Now you're different. Remember your past? Now things are different. Sometimes it's hard for us to remember, isn't it? We can get so tunnel visioned in what the reality is right now, we can forget what things were like. I love the memories function on Facebook as a daily reminder of what our family was doing over the years. It's more than just the photos, although almost every day I send my daughter a picture of what she was like one of those years. It's also the reminders of things that happened. It's the people who were once in my life commenting on my posts, places that we went, ways that I looked at the world then. Remembering the past is good. It's a good thing to sit down and to remember what has changed over your life, to see how God has been at work in you. Paul invites the Christians at Ephesus to remember. Remember that time when you were called Gentiles? Remember that you were uncircumcised? You were different? Remember when you were without Christ? You were aliens? You were different? Well, now, now you're in Christ. Now you're citizens and family. Now you're brought near by the blood of Christ. Now you're brought near to God by the peace and reconciliation that Christ brings. Remember. Friends, if you remember nothing else from today, this is an amazing thing to remember. I don't know about you, but I've lived all my life knowing, without knowing this before that the church of Ephesus did. I grew up in the church. I've lived my whole life knowing about Jesus. Many of you are there as well. It's hard to identify with those that Paul's talking to. It's hard to identify as those who have no hope and those without God. And yet, I can remember times when I've been further from God than others. Can't you? I can remember times when I felt like God was so far away, there's no way God listened to my prayers, much less answered them. I can remember times when I felt alienated from life with God. I can remember times when I felt estranged from the ways of Jesus. I can remember that even while I did know Christ. 
There were times when I was drinking and partying and not praying or spending times in worship. There were other times when I was selfish in my marriage and mean to my husband. Other times when I wasn't sure where God was, when I was so far from God that I wasn't sure why I was a Christian, much less a pastor in a church. Remember, even if you can't remember a time when you didn't know the love of God with your head, there have been times that you remember that you felt like an alien and a stranger in church without God in the world. Remember. The good news is that that God has brought us near by the blood of Jesus Christ. God has brought us near to God by the reconciliation and the peace that Christ brings to us. We are family. We are citizens in God's community. Whether we feel God or not, God is near because of Christ. If this is the good news you need to hear today, then I pray that you hear it. Christ is our peace. Christ brings us to God through the Spirit. You are family. But there's a lot more in this passage that I want to explore. Let's dig a little bit deeper, shall we? The passage begins by remembering what used to be. Remember when you're alienated. Remember you're without Christ. You're aliens from Israel. You're strangers to the covenant. You had no hope. You were without God in the world. I'm going to repeat that part. Remember when you were without God in the world. Now, of all the things that Paul said right now, that one doesn't seem to be very big, does it? I mean, he just called them aliens. Isn't that a little bit bigger than this? You were without God in the world. We miss how strong this phrase is in the English translation. Paul called the people atheos. Um, This is a strong word. It's an insult on the people who heard it. It was hate speech. It was used to insult someone who disdained or denied the gods and their laws. It was used to insult someone who disdained the structure and the very fabric and the glue of society. To call someone atheos was to call them uncivilized. These are fighting words. Paul just insulted the people in the pews. Spoiler alert. That's not a good idea. Paul just insulted the church. Remember how you were uncivilized, he said. The reality is the people did live in very different realities. There were huge dividing walls between Jew and Gentile. Gentiles called Jews atheos because they refused to participate in the religion of the day. Jews called Greeks atheos because they rejected God. There was active hostility between those who were in and those who were not. Insults and judgments and all that was to be. We still do this, don't we? We still have places today where we think our enemy is Athios. We stand in a world that should know the peace of Christ, and yet we continue to divide ourselves. We call each other atheos. You can't possibly be civilized because you don't think and act like me. Democrat and Republican, pro-life and pro-choice, orthodox and progressive, mainline and evangelical. UMC and GMC. Friends, we have a long election cycle in front of us. We see all around us the rhetoric and the hints and the outright accusations that the other side are atheos. They're uncivilized. They can't be right. They hate law and order. They disdain the laws and the structure and the glue and the fabric of our society. We see it all around us, and friends, we have to be careful. Be very careful that we don't let that rhetoric seep into our bones and make us forget the reality that, as, that we as Christians, we as the church, can show the world around us the radical nature of the gospel. We have an opportunity to show the world that Christ came to remove these barriers that keep us from one another and keep the name-calling up. 
We have an opportunity to show the world that our belief in Christ absolutely does change us. In the time of Paul, the church in Ephesus would have sat together and shared a meal. It was common to do that as part of worship. They came together, they ate together. And when their neighbors saw them, they would have been shocked. Those people are eating together. These people who aren't the same, these people who are enemies, these people who should be atheos are eating together. It was shocking and it was radical. And the people would say, the people in the pews, the people around the table would say, this is God's kingdom come, God's will be done. This coming together of people who were once enemies is God's peace on earth. Remember when we were enemies. Remember at one time you were called Gentiles. You were uncircumcised. You were different. Remember that one time you were without Christ. You were aliens. You were different. Well, now we are all one in Christ. Now we are all at the table. Now we are citizens and family. Now we are brought near to the blood of Christ. Now we are brought near to God by the peace and the reconciliation of Jesus Christ. Now we live in the household of God with Christ as our foundation. Can I get an amen? This is what moves us to the shocking places where fences and walls are torn down and we sit together in unity. And friends, we don't do this, but Christ does this within us. When we dig a little bit deeper in this text, we find the core passage in verse 15. I invite you to read verse 15 with us in what is known as the New International Reader's Version Please read this with me. Through his body on the cross, Christ set aside the law with all its commands and rules. He planned to create one new people out of Jews and Gentiles. He wanted to make peace between him. God planned to create one new people together. This is the heart of the text. In Christ, God has removed the laws and the commandments and everything that is put in place that separate us from one another. In Christ, God has torn down those barriers and united us as one people. In Christ, we are all the same. We are aliens brought near. We are one new people rather than separate. We are reconciled and we live together in unity. Divisions are erased and we can model to the world that we don't have to vote alike. We don't have to think alike or act alike to be able to sit down at the same table together, to worship God together, to love one another in thought and in deed. Every Sunday morning we sing our song offering shalom to one another. Shalom is the Hebrew word that means peace. It's a rich and full and nuanced word that is bigger than peace, but that's how it's translated. And so each Sunday and each Wednesday when we sing shalom, we offer the peace of Christ to each other. We remember what Christ has done for us. We remember that we are brought near to one another. We remember the reconciliation Christ offers us, bringing us near to God. Every time we sing our shalom, we're remembering God's act to bring peace to a divided world. We remember that when we participate in God's kingdom here on earth, we are participating in offering shalom. Christ's peace. We are offering, we are breaking down barriers, we are seeing aliens drawn near, we are showing what it means to sit with others who aren't like us and to live in peace. And when we offer shalom, Paul says, God comes to live. Christ's peace reconciles us to God and to one another, and it's a beautiful thing. Friends, I invite you to remember Remember that once you were separated from God. Remember that once you were separated from each other. But now Christ's peace brings us together in shocking ways. May you remember what God has done for us. Receive the peace of Christ that breaks down barriers 
and live in the new humanity that God brings. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. God, we live in a broken world. We live in a world that is divided by us and them. We live in a world where we have to listen to so much hatred and negativity. And we seek you in the midst of it all. Oh God, show us how once we were part of that, but now we are part of you. Show us how we can offer your shalom, your peace to a world that is hurting and knows there has to be something different. Oh God, show us how we can act in ways that are different, how we can be your people of peace. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. Our closing hymn today reminds us that uh, while we are rooted in our past, we go forward into what is to come. And so I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we sing our closing song, Forward Through the Ages. This morning I am wearing a new stole. It is orange, the color of uh, gun violence awareness and prevention. I at, it has poppies on it, symbols of peace and an end to war for many, many years. I asked Annabelle, a retired pastor in the United Methodist Church in our conference, to uh, make a stole for me, and she did. She made one as well for the bishop, so he has one that's uh, identical. 
I wear it today as the reminder of the peace that Christ brings. We long for a day where there is peace on our wor- in our world, peace in our nation, peace in our communities. And so may you be agents of Christ's peace. May you go with Christ's peace, remembering that once you were far away, but Christ has brought you near. May you go knowing the peace of Christ within you and offering that peace to those you see. Go in the name of God, our Father, his Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to pass the peace of Christ to one another as we do sing our shalom. Have a cookie, some drinks, and have conversation with somebody you didn't come here with.